Deanna Maurice, weekly craft and lifestyle content. In this tutorial, the dimensions that I'll be sharing are five and a half by eight and a half. This is a half size to a full sheet of standard printing paper, which is an eight and a half by 11 inches. Originally, I did have my sheet set to a different dimension, but I'm going to show you how I corrected that a little later in this video. Here, I imported my sentiment that I just typed up over in the notes section to make sure that there were no um, misspelled words. And then here, I am separating my text into three different text blocks. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to be using different fonts in different areas. And it's just the way that I like to do it. If you're not going to be using many different fonts, you don't have to do this. But this is something that I do like to do. So this is a mock-up sample, but I do actually include one of these into my week 24 orders from my Etsy shop. Something very similar. But basically what I have on it, I have a few different areas. The first area is a thank you message right up at the top. Then I have ways that a customer can support even further because even if they're not spending more money right away by them sharing uh, your store or your item, it is definitely going to help your business as well as giving them a coupon that they can come back and use on your site or with you. Basically, this is going to encourage another sale, another repeat sale. And in business, what you're looking for a lot of times, especially if you're selling goods, our loyal customers who will continue to come back and support you. Over on the right hand side here, you see that I have a few different things. I have a color palette that I'm going with. I have um, my logo up here at the top and then I also have some florals that look nicely with my color palette and my logo. So you want to make sure that this thank you card also represents your brand. So you definitely want to stick with in the same color palette as your logo if possible. Now I'm just going to mess around with the font figuring out exactly which font that I would like to use. A suggestion that I have for you, for your larger fonts, you can use something a little bit more fancy if you want to use a script, cursive, that sort of thing, um, more of a decorative font. But for the bulk message, you want to use something that is easy to be read, something that someone can pick up and look at it really quickly and read it easily. Another thing that I like to do is to zoom in down to 100% or thereabout to see exactly how the text will print and what it will look like in real life once it's printed out and in my hands. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to send something that is difficult for someone to read. You don't want something with too many words. And for me, like I do have a little bit more wording on here but that's because I kind of wanted to have a business card, a thank you card, a follow up and a coupon all in one. So that is also why I create three different sections and make sure that each section has its own um, header or something that's going to pop and help to bring the eye to that point. The next thing that I would suggest is limiting the amount of different fonts that you use. It is okay to use three fonts, but more than that I think would become too much and a bit overwhelming. The only place that I would see that appropriate is maybe if you're targeting more of a kid group. Um, and even with that you could play I think more with colors than different font types because you don't want um, this thank you to become too busy where the person isn't even interested in reading the information that it has on there. Another thing that you can add onto your thank you card are your social media handles letting your consumer know exactly on what platforms other than either your personal Shopify or your Etsy 
or your personal um, you know, e-commerce site where they can find you, where they can follow you, where they can interact with you. You also want to have your information on the card as well as far as like email and phone number if you have one. And up at the top, I forgot to mention this earlier, but if you've watched me before, you know that your logo goes on everything. So my logo is there at the top. Now I'm pulling in the florals and I'm going to size this up and just play with this. This is an image that I grabbed um, off of Google from an Etsy shop. If I were doing this for real, I would actually purchase the clip art pack from the Etsy shop owner um, because it is beautiful and I'm using it so you definitely want to give credit where it's due and not only that if you zoom in really close on this it has watermarks and that sort of thing on it so that is where you could get images like this you can get clip art packs from Etsy so here I'm just cleaning up um, with my eraser tool some images since it, I'm just doing this basically for the purpose of this demonstration. If you don't want to spend money on a backdrop and you just want to find something off of Google or Yahoo, you definitely can do that. Just type in, you know, in this instance, I would have typed in coral florals, PNG or transparent background, something along the lines. Like I told you guys in a couple videos back, also there is PNGtree.com for this that is where that site would be great if you don't have a membership because you really just need like one image from them. So you could get that free and use it on a project like this and keep that image to carry through to some of your other branding projects. So to be cost effective, my option for these are to print them at home on my personal printer on a 65 pound cardstock or however thick of a cardstock your printer can handle. So I don't want to use too much color even though I do have the HP Instant Ink subscription, something you may want to check out if you are doing a lot of printing. But anyways, in the instance that you don't want to use a lot of ink, I like to put my florals and that sort of thing, like my backdrop, I like to lower the opacity and this also helps to give a bit of dimension. And especially in this case, my logo has very similar colors to the florals, so I don't want them competing for attention. My florals are meant to be subtle, but add a bit of interest and elegance to this card. But once again, I don't want it to overpower the logo and the message on this thank you card. My font is pretty much in place. And it's looking the way that I want it to. So now I'm going to go ahead and add color. This is the reason why I like to have a preset color palette picked out. Because I can just use my color picker tool. So it's this little tool that you see me using here. And I can click on an image anywhere on the screen. Or anything on the screen. And it's going to pull that color directly over into my um, swatch. And then you have that same exact color. You don't have to go digging through the colors to find what you want. I'm going to have my coupon code pop out more by putting a rectangle with the coral color behind it and changing the lettering to white. By changing the lettering to white, it almost looks as if I did a knockout text, but I didn't. I just changed the lettering to white. And the reason why you want to put a coupon, quick tip, the reason why you want to put a coupon is because in retail, the biggest thing is loyalty and people coming back. If you have reoccurring customers, you're good. Reoccurring customers in addition to new customers. Now, if someone really likes your product, guess what? They're gonna share that information with other people. And the fact that you offer them a discount on top of, you know, the good product that you provided them with, they're gonna be so happy about that and that you're gonna show them that you actually do value them shopping with you. So this gives them more of an incentive to come back and shop with you at a later date. At this point I realized my mistake after I saved my image as a JPEG so I needed to fix it before I could do my layout. When saving your work always save an editable format so always save a Photoshop format um, instead of only saving the JPEG because then you can go back and edit your work. So here I just changed my canvas size to five and a half by eight and a half so that once I print it it would print out once I do my layout and everything which you guys will see in a bit 
it'll print out perfectly through my home printer on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. Because of my mistake that I made, now I'm moving around the layers to fit this dimension of sheet better than the way that I had it before. And I should have caught this because when I was laying out the text, I was like, wait a second, why don't I have enough room? Why am I having to bring things in? This was a simple fix. And honestly, sometimes errors are good so that you can look out for them the next time. Because I had to change the dimensions, I had less space. And I wanted to make sure that my logo was still popping. So I put a semi-translucent box behind the logo and then I put a drop shadow on it. And I changed the mode, the color of my drop shadow to this coral to match back with the rest of the theme. You could have left it, you could leave it black if you would like to, but I thought that the coral color looked nice. And that was pretty much it, honestly, at this point. I am going to align everything and make sure that everything is centered. Um, a little tip, go ahead and lock your behind layers. So for example, the flowers, go ahead and lock those so that when you align them to the center, they don't go haywire <laughs> all over the place because really you just want your text to be aligned and for example, like the social media stripped down at the bottom. After you have it aligned, go ahead and save your document. So at this point, as you guys can see, I changed my mind. <laughs> I wanted my text to be a little bit bigger, but that is the beauty about Photoshop and having control over your own work. That is the reason why it makes sense to learn these programs as a business owner because you can do the work on your own. Yes, it is great to hire graphic designers and that sort of thing, but for things like this, you can do it yourself. So as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and save it as a JPEG in the correct form. It's just asking me if I wanna replace it because I had already saved the same thing earlier, but now that it's in the right size, I'm gonna go ahead and hit replace. You see me save it twice because I'm saving one in the Photoshop format and then I'm saving the second one in the JPEG format, which is the printable format that I will be using. Trust me, I have made the mistake before to not save my Photoshop version. And after you do all of this work and notice that there's something that needs to be fixed, that is the worst. So before you save your JPEG version, make sure you save your Photoshop version. Even if you're like, oh, this is a one-time thing, Save it as Photoshop, even if it's for the day. <laughs> and then once you used it and it's done with, delete it. So here I have a 11 by eight and a half sheet, which is the standard US paper that, you know, goes into your at home printer. And I have it laid out here horizontally and I'm just going to pull my JPEG images in and I'm going to align them at the top and then save this as a different JPEG. And I like to label it, for example, like thank you layout, that sort of thing, so that I know that this is exactly the way that I'm gonna need it to print through to the printer. And guys, that is it. That is how you do this. At this point, once it's saved, put it, tuck it away in a nice safe place and make sure that you have it in two different areas. So if one area gets messed up, you still have your thank you branding card. When you go to print, this is what it should look like on your printer. Everything's already laid out. And if your printer gives you the option of borderless, you can go ahead and select that because we did design it so that it could be borderless. And for those who may ask what kind of printer I have, I have a HP Envy 5000 series that I got at um, Best Buy. Yeah, and it's been working great for me and it does up to like 65 pound cardstock which is what I use. I will leave a link to the kind of paper that I recently got on Amazon and that I have been enjoying. Another option that I wanna share with you guys is this site that I came across that is called Canva. So I originally came across it on my phone as an app and I fell in love with it. The version that I have is free. They do have a paid portion. So if you want access to more things like layering and um, more images, that sort of thing, 
they do have like a monthly subscription fee. Now, if you don't have Photoshop and all of those sort of things, then I may consider it. But honestly, they have so much things on here for free. Like if you guys look down a little bit where you see Shop Disney Mask, I actually use this for my own personal Instagram posts for my Etsy shop because even though I am a designer, this thing is so simple to use. They have a lot of images already loaded loaded in. They have GIF or GIF images, however you say it. They have so many different templates from posters to logos, Instagram posts, YouTube thumbnails, flyers. They have so many different things. Wedding invitations. You can definitely go on here and find something. So what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to show you guys really quickly i'm going to speed up some portions of course but i'm going to show you guys how i created a thank you note within 10 minutes you guys ready let's go i found this free template under posters and i'm just changing out the text to match what i needed to say and i'm going to delete some of these text boxes because i don't want them and then i'm going to add in <laughs> A text box that I do want I just wanted a simple text box with it and then I could format it the way that I want it so as you guys can see that first text box is a little too big and then I copied and pasted in the information that I needed now I'm going to just move around the information so that it lays out the way that I need it to but as you guys can see no fancy buttons it's pretty simple and straightforward You can also upload your own personal images to this Canva website. And so here I am going to import in my logo and just slide it to the top of the poster. I didn't have my logo saved as a PNG so I was like, hmm, let me see if I can remove the background on here. And that's when it popped up and told me, mm, you don't have this feature because it isn't a free feature. But if you have your logo in a PNG format with a transparent background, that's not an issue. Um, and if you don't, honestly, go ahead and use it like this. It doesn't look the best, but it's still okay. You just want to make sure that your logo is on there somewhere. And I also imported the Etsy logo. And now I'm just going to put my contact information into a different text box. If you highlight a specific word, you can go ahead and change the font size the thickness and the color and something very cool that I think Canva does is they pull that color palette for you. So whatever colors are already in the document, they pull them and put them aside for you so that you can go ahead and make sure that you have a cohesive image. This was a very quick and surface Canva tutorial, but as you guys can see, we still came out with a really nice end product. And from this point, you can just go ahead and save it in the format that you would like to use. I like JPEG. Check the description box for anything that I mentioned in today's video so that you can go ahead and get the product to create this project as well as use my affiliate links for anything that you see down there that you are interested in. I would appreciate it. You'll help me and I'll help you by creating all of these video tutorials to help you improve your e-commerce business or just crafting in general. You guys stay blessed and have a good day. Bye.